Hi, and welcome back to SallyHeesBeauty.com. Um, I am still with Morag Ross, who is a top film makeup artist and three times BAFTA winner, which is really exciting for me. It's been one of my favorite videos ever because I've learned so much. There's just tons and tons of stuff I didn't know about this side of the business that um, I now have a better handle on. So it's been really brilliant for me, but also we always want to see the product, of course. Um, so having been in Morag's private bathroom, we are now at her kitchen table and we are going to look at just some of the products in her kit that she uses on film sets. So thank you for having us back. Thank so, you for being here. We have two zipper cases. Two. And these don't go in your storage facility with the other cast off film makeup these have to stay here because they're precious yeah, yeah? they're precious I suppose it's it's even a girly thing because they're, they're gorgeous things you know right and I like I like having and then you know somebody might ask me to do their makeup and it means that I don't have to go to my store mm -hmm. basically where there's tons of stuff and I just end up buying all the stuff all over again mm -hmm. I'm lazy to go there but um, so it's all in Zuka bags. I know that you've got a Zuka, haven't you? I've got a Zuka. Um, Lauren's got a Zuka. I do love a Zuka. Not Have you got the, if this you one or, or that one? Seat on the train. Um, this I've one. Got, yeah, I've got the one. See, that's a new one, and I prefer the old one. I like the seat on the yeah, old one. Me too. Fat, square that one is considered a seat, but it's as you can see, it's really not very deep, so it's quite difficult to sit on. But that one goes. That in one's in. great. Does that one go in an overhead plane? Yeah, um, I, th I think they both do. Yeah. They both do, but that one is supposed to be a better shape for it, the airplane, that's why they... But you like the old fat one? I prefer the old. And it doesn't have the disco wheels. Yeah. The new one. Yeah. I, I, know, I like the disco wheels and it kind of... Other people like the disco wheels as well. So this kit you have here, so for example, if a really good friend of yours said, can you do my wedding? You would yeah. be sorted. Yes, with I'd this. be sorted. There might be a couple of things that I would buy. And all, you know, because what happens at the end of a film is, especially if I'm on location, I, give my, I just give it away, you know, I give it to the assistants, you know, who probably don't have, they don't have a budget and they don't, they're not gonna get such nice stuff. So rather than schlep it all home, and also because, oh, look, you can see this hasn't been out, it's a bit of an accident here, can you see what that is? Oh, I bet that happened. <laughs> um, I give it away. Because it's only going to go off, isn't it? And then buy it again the next time. And do the actresses ever, you know, politely nick stuff from you that they've fallen in love with where you just kind of pass it on? Polite? Oh, yeah, all the time. Yeah. <laughs> all the time, but, um, you know, I take it as a compliment. Just a few bits. And what are my favourite... I've got favourite bags. I mean, this is quite a nice bag because... I think this is obviously all my lip stuff. Mm -hmm. So... Um, Straws for actresses to yeah. drink their coffee and not yeah, ruin your lips. Yeah. Have you ever seen those? No. Are they like oh, brownies or something? No, it's the opposite. Look. It's... And um, they're called magic stripes. And it's if you've got a hooded eye... Yeah. You stick it on... You see that little yeah. like coffee bean thing? It's, that's two parts. Right. So you stick it on, you have to get right on the exact line, and it creates a socket. Blimey. So the guy in the shop, it was a guy, he showed me how to do it, and it was... Which shop? I was at, Fox or somewhere? No, I was in Montreal, but I think you can get them here now. I don't know where, but I'm sure you just Google it. But the thing is, it's not foolproof. It wasn't foolproof enough for film for me. Right. But I bought them because I thought, you could get them made out of silicon or something, yeah, you know, like yeah. a prosthetic for a film yeah. and create a different eye. Yeah. So I wanted to use it as a sort of idea. For, yeah. Because it's really clever. Cool. Love these eyelash curlers mm -hmm. because you don't get the clamp mark. Okay, so are these heated? These are the <coughs> heated ones, yeah. Mm -hmm. So. How do you use those? I have no success with those. I got sent some about uh, six months ago and I just couldn't... Well, the thing is... Um, like, you would use your ordinary metal eye, eye curlers before you put your mascara on, mm -hmm. and these you use after. Oh, okay. Because it kind of works with the mascara. Okay. And, you know, it's like a heated roller. So mm -hmm. you put your mascara on, and then just start at the base and just hold it and work your way up and push in mm -hmm. to get a curl, and it's brilliant. Oh, cool. They're really... I'll revisit. Fantastic. And that's my favourite one that I curl. So, um, this is a... I love this. 
lip pout or something. It's made by Blue. Fabio Lips. That's what it's called. And this was a really nice present that I got from actually Janine Lavelle, mm -hmm. who I think had done a red carpet thing with Kate. Mm -hmm. And then we were starting, which film? It might have been Cinderella. Yeah, it was Cinderella. And Kate arrived and she said, I've got something for you from Janine. And she said, you're going to love it. This, just so, Janine Lavelle is a very, very famous makeup artist specialising in red carpet and she founded Steeler. Yeah. She is no longer owner of Steeler, but she founded Steeler and sort of invented mass market cream blush and that kind of yes. thing. She's amazing. And, um, and it's fantastic. It's a little pot of lip exfoliator. Whoops, what? Lip exfoliator. Uh-huh. And then, I don't see this hasn't gone. I think I because I take the, bat oh, the batteries out. Oh, so you're deflating out. lips with it, are you? Oh, yeah, and it's fantastic. And then you just run that over the exfoliator. Ooh. And it deflates the lips wonderfully, and it kind of stimulates everything, so you get, so you a, get a bit more pouty. Yes. I want it. And so we used to do that, I think, on Cinderella, like for every close-up, which was quite hard work, because Kate had very, very particular, very defined red lips on them. Mm -hmm. So you take all the lips off, use this, and yeah. put it back on again. Yeah. But it's really amazing and I've used it on every job since. So thank cool. you, Janine. Toothpicks, which is, you know, I can't live without them on a set. It's very embarrassing if the actor speaks and I haven't done my checks. <laughs> I've just had one. So you're always checking teeth and always, stuff? Always, always checking teeth and, you know, it's like, you know, the, the less glamorous things, yeah. really, that I'm always checking. Noses, uh, nose emergencies. Flaky skin, bogeys. Yeah, bogeys, nostril hairs. Yeah. <laughs> and do you just have to very silently sweep in, take care of it and sweep yeah. away? I usually say, do you want to just step to the side for a second? Right, this is really you don't close. want to embarrass them. Yeah. Okay. Um, love that. Oh, I like that too. It's good, isn't it? And it's nice actually for a change from a lip balm because it's a cream and yeah. so it's very easy to use. And it's, and a, it's a bit nice pouty, sense. I yes. think. Very good on the outer edge. Yeah, so this is total lip treatment by Sensai. Mary uses this actually. I think that's where it might have come from actually because, you know, it was a Kate request. So right. I got addicted to it. So I, I like that overlap because then I feel that I'm yeah. learning things from other yeah. makeup artists. And also, you know, because I get quite... Um, not quite so. I always think, well, they must know so much more than me, you know, and, you know, all the products and everything, oh, God, I just don't know enough. So it's really nice to sort of get a bit of Well, your guidance. work tends to be quite long term, doesn't it? You could be gone for months at a time on the one job. And I yeah. suppose the fashion makeup artist has, has done 100 jobs in that yeah. time. And also, it's not, it's not so much about trends, my job. So yeah. if I've got something that works, I tend to stick with it because yeah. it's foolproof and I'm not going to come unstuck during the day because I know that something works on camera. Yeah. This is little tools that I like, so I love stuff like this. Mirror with a light in and my mixing palette, of course. Uh-huh. Um, so you're mixing up base and things yes, on here? Yes, just to keep it all clean, I'll usually put all the colours on the palette uh -huh. and, and then just work with it in case I need to mix some colours in or add a bit of yellow or a bit of moisturiser even. I'll just do it on the palette with a palette knife. Mm -hmm. um, this is probably to get me out of trouble with something unruly. This is my spirit gun bag. I've taken the glue out because it was going into a FedEx package. But So tell people what you would typically be using spirit gum for. What kind of situations? Well I would use spirit gum, you know, it is, it's an adhesive so I would use it to put on moustaches mm -hmm. or maybe false eyebrows mm -hmm. on an ageing makeup or even on a beauty makeup if I had um, eyebrows that were really tough and just wouldn't stay. Yeah. I might actually use spirit gum. Uh -huh. um, it'd be really good. So like a bloke's eyebrows maybe? No, on a beauty makeup I okay. think. You know sometimes you, if eyebrows aren't, if someone isn't used to having their eyebrows groomed, you might just get one that yeah. really won't fit into the perfection of that uh -huh. shape. So I might use just a little bit of spirit gum mm -hmm. and brush it through to hold it. Palette knife, love. Oh, and I saw that in America. <laughs> when I was in New York this summer, they had these in, um, <laughs> in Ricky's I think. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Oh, I saw it and people suck it, don't they? Yeah, and I've then... got two kinds. <laughs> but you know, it's also quite nice. Sometimes you just want to diffuse the situation. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and uh, 
Kate loved those actually. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it's good for a bit of a laugh. I think I've got a long nail somewhere. And so I've got different glues in case people are allergic. Right. A um, little bit of tape, you know, you might want to make, create a little bit of a lift or something. Mm -hmm. um, these are me menthol crystals, which you would put in a little um, tear blower uh, to use if somebody needs to cry and they can't, their eyes are dried or something, they can't. Would most actors use. typically be able to make themselves cry? I think um, generally they prefer to, yeah. Yeah. It, it's, you know, it's, it's an active it. thing and they, and they yeah. do want to. But sometimes, you know, or maybe you've, you've cried 12 times yeah. and the director wants to go again and you yeah. just haven't got it. So yeah. that's just to help. Mm. Or I might use a bit of, you could use um, a tiny bit of alba soil. Mm -hmm. Just dab it on there with a cotton bud. Mm. You know, being careful not to put it too near the eye, obviously. And anything that's going to create things. Primers and things. So you're a primer user. Um, I love primers because um, I, I find that I can put on less makeup if yeah. I put on a primer. Yeah. So absolutely, I, I really love them, and and yeah, they I think they really work. Yeah. So this is of course a little bit of spot cream, blotting mm -hmm. paper. So the usual, you know, I love. That's so helpful for bites and things quickly, isn't it? And mm -hmm. um, what have I got? The the Becca primer, Evermark. Yeah. Really great for film. This is a really great, this is, do you know this La Roche Posay? I love La Roche Posay, it's brilliant. So do I. This one is the. That's really good. Uh, do you know this primer? Yeah, I love Becca generally. Yeah. I've never used this primer, I don't think. I find that quite good for men. Yeah, it's super matte. Because it's super no spangle. Matte. Yeah. yeah. So that's a really good base, even just with a bit of tinted yeah. moisturizer. This. Um, can you cut it up? Is it's so light and it's really fantastic. And this, thank you very much, was recommended to me by Sarah Jessica Parker. She really loves it, mm -hmm. and you know we would use it throughout the day, mm -hmm. just to rehydrate the skin just with to a refresh. blender. Yeah, on top of the makeup, just with a blender sponge, mm. you know, because you can use it round the eyes as well. Mm -hmm. So a little bit round the eyes and just from acting all day, you know. Um, Plumping fresh in. Yeah. It's a great brand, Lamont Posay. Really not good. expensive. So not expensive. Um, Tolerian fluid. It? Yeah. Oil free emulsion. Yeah, that's a very glamorous product, which, you know, I couldn't really. I did, actually, I did manage to use that on my film with Amy. Because um, she, uh, she had one scene that was. That's Charlotte's glamorous. supermodel yes. yeah. body. Supermodel body. And then I've got lots of, like, pores no more. Mm hmm. Um, Old favourites, Beauty it's Flash. Such, I was talking about Beauty Flash yesterday. It's such a simple product. It is just um, witch hazel and cornstarch, I think. It's like the most basic yeah. formulation. It was like the forerunner of all. It was the original the, primer, yeah. really, wasn't yes. it? But it does just perk mm. people up, doesn't yeah. it? It does do what it's supposed to do. Yeah. Um, Laura Mercier primer, the, yeah, the straight amazing. one, really fantastic. I got into these last year, the sort of coloured clinic yeah. primers, and I found them really helpful just again on HD mm -hmm. to prepare the skin without, you know, so I didn't have to put so much makeup on mm -hmm. on the top. It's this one, Shumura. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's nice for a bit of line filler, a bit of light reflection. Yes, I like this product. They've changed the packaging, I think. Instant line smoother, yeah. This is Suku. This is yeah, uh, another I thing. I love too. Suku. Oh, so do I. Suku is a really fantastic brand, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, I really love it. Um, Just fine. Everything's really. Everything's fine. so fine. Quite clever. Really nice packaging, and that's the upsurge, which is a really good thing for the morning to wait like, another wake up kind of face thing. Kick up the bum. Mm -hmm. Yeah, upsurge essence Suku. That's quite. I like this for, um, you know, matting down as well as yeah. you know blurring the lines a little bit. That's I mean, that was nice quite thing. a revolutionary product when mm. that launched. It's quite old now, but yes. instant smooth, the just tapping on matte yeah. without adding powder and yeah. makeup. That's yeah. quite good. Every makeup artist I've ever known has kept this. 
in their kit. Do you use it much? This is Le Blanc de Chanel. It was bigger in its Literally day, Literally since it? the 80s, every makeup artist I've ever worked with since the 80s has that. It was such a sort of coveted product. And it I, was. Even I remember, it was like a sort of... It was the first illuminator, yes, wasn't it? I remember um, I did a film with Tilda Swinton about... Yeah, she was playing an alien. It was, a, it was a little film. And I remember her in the first day saying, I, I want you to use some of Le Blanc Chanel. Because to get that, mm. I sort of really pale skin. Yeah. So this is getting more juicy now, isn't it? Mm. So you've got base here. Bases, yeah. Um, it's like the professional bases. Mm -hmm. Well, professional in the sense of especially for film. Um, I like the Tom Ford bases. Mm -hmm. I like the fact that he does the same. I think it's a really clever thing to do the same um, colours colour code numbers for each texture of makeup. Yes, so do I. I really love that. There's no confusion. Bobby does that, doesn't she? Yeah. And every now and then she doesn't do it and it makes everybody nuts because mm. you're totally confused Fluid. by yeah. it. But on the whole, she does it and Mac mm -hmm. mainly does yes, it. Yes, exactly. It's really good because it yeah. just makes the whole process much quicker yeah. and um, you don't have to faff around so much trying to find, you know, you know where you are basically, don't you? Exactly. So if you know that Kate is an NC20 but you're going to do a much lighter base, you can just grab yeah. the NC20 and you know you're done. Mm. Yeah. yeah. Wonder Glow. Mm -hmm. Glow. Of course, I love that. <laughs> um, How I love Sensual skin enhancer. I yeah. love it. It's beautiful. It's it? amazing. It's really great. Proper product. pigment. Yeah. yeah. I do and I, th I do think for film in the end proper pigment does yeah. work better. Yeah. I think it's much easier just to use um, a simpler foundation, a liquid, but under, especially if it's a studio picture and it's mm -hmm. under studio lighting, mm -hmm. um, proper pigment is going to win the day anytime. Yeah. And also, it's just going to last. It's a yeah. much, you know, it's a and long And you don't day. want to be troweling it on, do you? You want, no. to, you want it to be showing up. But also, I mean, that, you can you can take that out to as sheer as you want. Yeah. Or, yes, you know, exactly. You're just diluting so, it, aren't you? That's heavy duty. Yeah, <laughs> Cryolan. My, well, but this, you know, I always, this is just one colour that I was using a lot of, as you can see, it's Dermacolor, which I'm never without my Dermacolor palette mm -hmm. because it's got every corrective colour. But you could you could do a makeup with it if you had to. You could um, really yeah yeah you just you know uh, dilute it with moisturizer. Um, this is a really great color for covering a, a blue beard line. Mm -hmm. Oh, so it's that full on. It's yeah. that heavy duty. Yeah, just if some sometimes guys have got a really heavy beard growth that really looks blue after a few hours and you know it needs a bit of makeup. So mm. I would never have gone for this again. Um, Somebody asked me, to, you know, they wanted to use the air flash. Mm -hmm. um, I wouldn't go for it just because it's in a can, you know, yeah. and I wasn't so crazy about yeah. the can. And it's it's kind of chemically. doing the application for you as well, to well, a degree. Well, I couldn't, yeah, I put it on, what I did was spray it onto the palette. Yeah. And then apply yeah. it the way I wanted to because I thought, you know, I don't think you can have any control, can you? Well, no, I think if you're, if you have your level of expertise to have some packaging, doing the job for you is not ideal, mm. that's not what because you, you're going to yeah. need to do it in a very specific way. Yeah. It'd be quite good for body makeup though. Yeah, you know, for yeah. For a, a quick fix. Yeah, you know. big areas. Yeah. yeah. You might have, you know, five or six people to make up and then they're not going to have the same base. So there's a lot of, there's a lot of product to carry around mm -hmm. and then a, a lot of colours of the product. Oh, see, I love, I love this. Oh, dear, because I had my favourite, because I actually, I designed one of these for Pam. Yes, I saw online. Yeah. How did that come about? Just because um, I know Kate Benton, and mm -hmm. she actually worked with me on Hero. Mm -hmm. And at the time, she had just had this idea of, you know, putting out um, palettes that makeup artists, she wanted to do that. So she said, would you put a palette of six together? Mm -hmm. And um, and I did, and it was really like last night, I, I met this... Um, the uh, the couple of makeup artists who are nominated for an Oscar, mm -hmm. uh, they're Swedish, and um, I was chatting to her last night. And she said, "You know, I really love your palette. I use it all the time." Oh wow! So I was so chuffed. There'll be um, a link to Morag's palette underneath the video on sallyhughesbeauty.com if you want to click through and buy it, just in case you're wondering. But um, you know, I never. I, I have this. This is um, Le Mac Pro. Yeah. And it's an old, fashion. Well, it's an old. French brand of makeup mm -hmm. and you use it with the mixer yeah and I did actually I've used it for years and I did actually go to Paris 
when it was the original madame mm -hmm. was still working there in the shop and get her to show me how to use it. Mm -hmm. And how are you using it? We've had this product on before because Val Garland loves it. How are yeah. you using it? Well, um, the way madame taught me to use it was you have a, it's a triangular, it's like a body sponge really, it's quite mm -hmm. a dense sponge. Um, you take a, a pea-sized amount of the mixer, put it on the sponge, damp sponge, quickly over the face, mm -hmm. and then with the, with the same sponge, the same side that mm -hmm. the mixer was on, you would take some of the, the makeup that you're going to use. She rubbed it on her hand, because there's, such, there's a lot of wax in it, and it's very dense makeup, yes. so it all works with the warmth of yourself. And um, so she would get, work the makeup on her, the back of her hand so it's warmer and it softens and it, it gets much sheerer actually. Mm -hmm. And then just make up the skin that way. Once you're done and you've all the colours and corrected, shaded, everything, powder it with a powder puff with quite a lot of powder, but it's absolutely sheer powder. Roll the powder on quite a lot mm -hmm. and brush it off yeah. with um, a face brush like a yeah. dense. And um, Sometimes, you know, there are times when it doesn't work, I have found. It's a, it's a very particular brand of makeup. Mm -hmm. I think it's, I really love it. Um, you kind of have to wait uh, maybe an hour for it to kick in, half an hour, depending if you're a hot-blooded person, I suppose, because it really works with the warmth. You know, it gets a really natural sheen. It's absolutely beautiful, and it looks very sheer because of the warmth of your own skin. But it's a lot of faffing around and a lot of people get put off by that. It's a lot of faffing around, but when it's right... It's when gorgeous. It's lovelier than anything else at that particular thing. Yeah. So where typically would you use it? Would you choose to use it? Um, well, you know, I have it, for instance, on Carol. Mm -hmm. You know, that's, that's the maquillage, which is oh, the, the foundation. Um, but also I used it on Elizabeth, uh, the Golden Age, and Charlotte Grey, um, the aviator. Wow, so the base of Kate's base in that is this. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah. And so that's actually what I, I based my, um, the six colour palette that I, I put together for Pam, or chose the colours for Pam, I was based around what I use um, for something like the Aviator, for that kind of skin tone, except I used like three skin tones. You've got a 124, which, see this is a new palette, so it's kind of got a skin on it, so would you mm -hmm. normally be mixing colours together? Yeah, oh, so I put like a 124 and um, there's a TL3, which is a much warmer colour, and um, a C1, which I think is probably something like that, mm -hmm. as a highlighter, or to make it lighter. And that's why I would have the colours on a, a, a palette, a mm -hmm. stainless steel palette, and just mix them up as I want, or, or warm them up. And then the, I put in the CR, which is pale green colour, to take out any red. Mm -hmm. This colour, which really looks awful, um, but it's a fantastic non-red brown. And it goes so sheer, it looks like a really clunky, mm -hmm. heavy colour. But it goes to like a nothing colour. You can use it for a socket line, you can use it to shade the face, shade the nose. And it literally will sheer out to a, a, it's a tone mm -hmm. that you don't see. Mm. Um, I want to see it in action. Oh, and well. there's a little, I think that one's very like the original Touche Clark colour. Yeah, that salmon-y pink. And it really, really, because again of the, the pigment content, it really does kick out a dark mm -hmm. circle, you know, if you've got pale skin, if you've got... So it's, it's a really great... Um, Brilliant. ...palette. This is my sort of favourite colour, which is... Put some in your hand. This is 124, which is a really... Again, it looks quite dark, but... Um, It's just oh, a very yeah. nice um, cream base. You know. Actually feels quite lovely. Mm. Um, it's also totally waterproof. Mm. I remember Madame doing this little test and, you know, she finished, she had with a flourish, you know, she made up her hand and she powdered it. And then she took a, an Evian spray and she just, she sprayed it like mad and then she put a Kleenex on it and took the Kleenex away and there was absolutely Clean. no colour on it whatsoever. Yeah. So I used this... Um, to do a whole 40s makeup, somebody swimming up and down a, a pool, you know, in full glam makeup, mm -hmm. not natural makeup. So I used all so the... So you would the, use the red, the... I used the yeah. lip colour and the eye yeah. colours, and it was just fine. So that, that's good to know. So it's quite good for things like if somebody's crying. Yeah. Because it's not very nice to see um, 
milky like, tears. Yes, when yeah. it breaks breaks through the foundation, yeah. and you get these white rivets, yeah. of rivul rivulets of um, tears coming down. And especially when somebody's not supposed to be wearing makeup. Yeah. Oh my, look at that. This is, well, this is quite a good thing to see because this is one of the tragedies of any makeup artist, isn't it? Yeah. When you check your kit in and gutting, and you arrive, you open your kit in the morning to work and look. This is the foundation I use, my favourite foundation. So good. Mm -hmm. It's beautiful, I isn't love it? it. Um, we, Lauren will wash that, won't you? We'll wash those <laughs> bottles. <laughs> but look, there's a, there's a complete, there's a whole bottle of foundation has hit the dust. Yeah. Hasn't it? It's this one. Yeah. Oh! Oh! Oh no, 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 no. Oh dear, oh, no, I'm just going to no, run no. my hand under. <laughs> oh no. This is what happens. This, this is, is what happens, look. We are being authentic. <laughs> We're keeping it real. More like a sliced of thumb off. Yeah, I'm, I'm bleeding for <laughs> in the bathroom with Sally Hughes. <laughs> oh, is this mascara? We were talking about mascaras yeah. earlier, weren't we? So what have we got in here? Let's see. Baby doll, yeah. Baby doll, I think, wasn't crazy about that for myself as a mm -hmm. taste thing. I found it was too separating. Mm -hmm. But it would probably be quite good for a period production. Mm -hmm. um, you know, for 20s or 30s when the, the, mm -hmm. the lashes really separate, did look. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's not bad, that one. My I love that one, in extreme lash. dimension. Roller lash. Mm -hmm. um, you must get through tons of mascara because you have to throw it away so much. Because yes, you're constantly using. Yeah. So um, this is the Suku, uh, this is the eyebrow pen. Which I is, love that pen. So I'm, I'm obsessed I with it. I love that pen. It's the perfect colour. It's, a perfect, it's, it's, it's really like weird that they only have two, yes, two colours, and yeah. that is so clever, isn't yeah. it? Yeah, cold, yeah. murky ditch water, yes. yeah. lovely. Absolutely, it's, it isn't even a colour, which yeah. is what makes it so good. Yeah. And it's so fine, Yeah. It's and it's just, it's brilliant for everything, you know. I, I love that I, I like to combine it with other things, though, so I might so use that. what are that. you combining it with? Well, you know, I might use an eyebrow pencil, just yeah. like a Chanel pencil or... Mm -hmm one of the flat pencils, like Charlotte's pencils mm -hmm. or Hourglass, but then I would still want to use that yeah. for really fine finishing off. fine holes, or even just to, I think that's easier if you want to tip up an eyebrow just to get a bit of a question mark in a corner because it's so delicate yeah. and you've got so much control. Yeah. Because as, as sharp as you can get a pencil, you're never going to get it as sharp as that, are you? Yeah. Mm. Yeah, no, I love that product too. Love it. Or Mercier, yeah. Mm -hmm. Lots of... Mascara is there. This is quite a good eyeliner. It's really, really black. That one. I have written about that eyeliner yeah. many times. It's yeah. one of my favourites. <laughs> it's it's such a good brush. Yeah, yeah it's such a good brush, and it's so black. It's isn't properly it? black. I hate Everything, it when black it? goes see through. Hate yeah. it. And there's, I mean, so many. Uh, so many eye eyeliners on the market, aren't there? I mean, there's so much of everything. That's so always been. I mean, that product's existed for years and years. It's and beautiful, years, though, it's isn't brilliant. it? Brilliant. So black. Lovely. I'll just put blood all over it. Look at that. Oh, oh it's more rag. It's just kind of, it must have been, it was just a shard of glass that went right in. Oh well, at least you're not someone who needs her hands in particularly dexterous Yes, it's night out. Health. Yeah, it's very hygienic, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, it's not like your hands matter. It's like a murder super? scene. You, I yes, I have this palette. It's lovely. Yeah. Again, they're really good pigment, aren't they? They're really nice and dense. They're really nice and dense, and then they're really, they're just, they're a lovely texture, aren't they? They yeah. go on well and... Yeah. Yeah, the, the shimmery ones don't flake off mm -hmm. as you're putting them on. They stay there, they stick down. All your makeup's really nice and clean. Are you quite fastidious on set? I am, yeah. I'm a, I'm a bit of a neat nick. Keep and it. And a, clean station. Yeah. Sometimes, somebody said to me it was a bit scary once. They thought it was a bit like surgery or mm. the dentist or something. Yeah. But, you know. Um, yes, it, you like everything kind of laid out. and Yeah. And also, yeah, I just, it's for, again, it's for speed. You know, when you have yeah. a certain amount of time, everything is always in the same place. And yeah, I do it sometimes. If it's, if I've got a lot of things that I'm doing, I have a little um, map, well, a map, a little list of, like a recipe beside the mirror, just mm -hmm. to say, what to do next so that I don't sometimes I forget mm -hmm. and if somebody comes in or the director comes in and says oh can I just talk to whoever and we just want to go through the scene obviously yeah that's what they're going to do but it, it does throw me because suddenly my sort of 
cooking regimen yes, has been no. interrupted and I have to be really careful not to miss something out. So I usually keep a little list beside the meal. Mm. Is it sometimes a real um, treat for you if you're just doing one person, if, if you're on a film and you're just looking after the star or whatever and you're, mm. not, you're not having to be mummy yes. makeup? Yeah. And responsible for everything yeah, else. Yeah, you know, in charge of the budget and the, and all of that. Mm. Is it nice to just turn up and be like, well, I'm, I'm just here yeah. for Kate? That must yes. be a treat sometimes. It is, yeah, I love it. A I bit do of a love wind it. down. Um, it's a wind down, but it's a different kind of pressure. How so? Well, obviously because that, that's only going to happen, um, they're only going to allow that in the budget, you know, someone to have a personal makeup if that person has an important role. It has to look phenomenal. So all eyes are going to be yeah. on that. And so you have to come up with a good reason. So it's different from that kind of pressure, mm. you know. Um, but it's lovely and it's, it's a lovely balance to some, you know, sometimes I'll do personal and sometimes I'll do makeup designer for the whole film. So it's nice just to change things mm -hmm. all the time. Is there any kind of consumer makeup product that, that, that we women use in real life that just does not work on film? Well, anything that's too sparkly for yeah. is is the obvious one. Um, you know, uh, basically for film, you know, you're flattening everything out almost. Mm. You know, you want to make it flat, and then the cinematographer is going to light. Mm. You know, obviously you want to sculpt a face and get it to look good, and you might have to contour, but um, not with highlighting, not with sparkly stuff. I think that's the worst offender, really. So to highlight, you would just use something pale, but you yes. wouldn't use a highlighter because that you your director of lighting much, would yeah. yeah they get a bit confused by it. Although I mean you know I have done a little bit because I quite like it and it has sort of it is sort of moving in that way, but mm -hmm. you just can't use a lot of it. It would be too much. And you know again, it's that nice you know and I, just talking about the relationships you know with the crew, the cinematographer is so important yeah. really. Yeah, um, I mean that's got to be your your most important person. Yes, exactly. Yeah, exactly. Really, and if I'm having problems one day, you know, I might have problems. We might have a you know a problem blemish or just somebody's really tired one day, and I've done my best, but I can't do any more, and mm -hmm. I don't want to put on loads of makeup. So I'll mm -hmm. just say, listen, is there anything you can do? You really have to help me here and mm -hmm. soften the light or whatever. Mm -hmm. These were amazing. I like the look of this bag. What's in here? Well, this is just eyebrows and they were very short lived as far as I know. They, I bought them in John Lewis many, oh. many years ago. And Oh, so this is not professional stuff. This no, was this, consumer. Yeah, these are made by Andrea, you know. Bloody hell, isn't it? Individual and brow hairs. They're individual and they sold them in John Lewis, not in Screen Face. I think I might have told Screen Face about them because I went mad, but for them. Um, so I, I bought as many as I could, but then they just stopped because who was going to buy them? I mean, it is quite a weird thing for somebody to go and buy. Yes, I can I know, see why exactly. you would need them. It's a very weird thing. You're not going to go yeah. to. Who's going to go to John Lewis to buy fake eyebrows? Yeah. Not anybody, really. So you're sticking these on hair by hair? Hair by hair. And it's very time consuming. But if you really, you know, if somebody came, for instance, you know, I call them golf club eyebrows. Golf club, when they've got like yeah. the big bit of hair that goes into a thin eyebrow, it's really unattractive. Yeah. Yeah, so the thick bit here at the end. The thick bit here in the centre. And that then, goes down almost. Yes, like a golf club. Yeah. So you've got the thick bit yeah. here, but and instead of being a gradual mean. curve, it's a, it goes to a thin line. Yeah. And it's really, so, um, to fill that in, you know, sometimes you just can't do that with colour because you're going to see the difference, obviously, the in texture. the texture, especially yeah. with close-ups and things. So I would use surgical adhesive or dual you could use. I would probably use um, Prosade because it's stronger and it's the same, it's a latex and it's going to dry clear. And you know, and they, they, you know, they have short, medium and long. And the great thing about it, it's not just blunt, <laughs> it's not just blunt hairs, they've actually, they, they go to a point. Yeah. These are mental. I can't <laughs> believe they sold them in John Lewis, how much? I know, now they can, but I really wish they would make them again. Have you tried contacting the manufacturer? I suppose I should, you know. Because if I ever see them, I'll buy them for you. Okay. Because you must be They're running really out. They're really precious. Yeah. yeah. So I almost, you know, Do you I, want to I, pick them off the face and put them back yes, in I the palette? I really, uh, I have to debate long and hard about 
you know, is it worthy? Is it a worthy moment to use them? To justify yeah. raiding your own stash. So you've got cheeks here by the looks. Cheeks, and they, these are kind of but cheeks but that are on a stick. And really love them. I tell that's quite, you know, talking about shaders, they're good, aren't they? They yeah. make up forever. Yeah. And also Great they brand. come in different, um, one, two and three, so you don't want mm -hmm. too dark. So that's my shaders here. And then I really love these tart yeah, sticks. Yeah, I've got that. I love it. They're so gentle and pretty, natural. And nice you can finish. use them on lips, you know. So they're just... I like the slightly tacky finish. Yeah, yeah they're nice. really gorgeous. Um, I like these. The aqua blush. Yeah. And they, they feel nice on the skin, don't they? Because yeah. they're cooling, aren't they? I only really like um, a cream blush in my old age. I don't yes. really do powder anymore. Yeah, I it's used to. much more flattering, isn't yeah. it? Yeah, I used to always wear powder blush, but I don't really do it anymore. Concealers, of course, you know, like any, you can go on forever, can mm. you? Um, I'm always, you know, they're, that's very handy to carry around. This again, this is Le Maquillage. Mm -hmm. They've done little concealer palettes. That's really nice. Just for your set bag. So I would imagine someone like you, pretty much, you're always mixing. Yeah. Mm. I, I mean, looking at this, it seems like you're rarely going to get a ready done concealer mm. out and put it on. Yeah, very rarely. Um, but, you know, some things are really good. You know, I quite quite like the Alice Fast Concealer. Um, it's got a nice cookie in it. Alice Fast keeps on. coming up in these videos. Really? Yeah. Oh, good. Yeah, they, you don't actually, see that's much, one but... person that she's also very generous, you know, has sent mm -hmm. me lots of things to try out, mm -hmm. um, which is nice. Um, I like the concealer, the, the foundation is not really nice too. Mm -hmm. um, very, it's a very fashion oriented brand, isn't yeah. it? Yeah, so, and a packaging concept. Yes. And, yeah. Um, these are really great little palettes. I mean, you know, obviously, I love makeup palette forever. obsessed. So are you quite often mixing colour correctors into bases and concealers and, and so on? Yep. Um, I, used to, I used to love, uh, it was, I mean, it was, it was before um, all the foundations did get a bit yellower, but MAC had a green one. I don't, do you remember there was a yeah. green liquid one? And I loved it when I was working in Europe where there were more sallow complexions because all you did was add a little tiny drop. Yeah. And you could transform a... Because foundations, foundations were always pink, yeah. weren't they? Yeah. In the 80s. In, you had to get professional products to make them yeah. not pink. You could never buy consumer yellow ones. Secret camouflage. Mm -hmm. Love it. And All makeup artists have secret <laughs> camouflage. That's another thing. Yeah. So you're, you, I can see, I'm just opening these palettes. You're obviously a hygiene freak because all these things have been sanitised. It, mu it must be important to actors and actresses that they're not sharing bacteria yes. with um, every actor you've ever worked with. I know, I mean, and as much as possible, you know, I'll buy everything new, but yeah. you can't buy yeah. everything new. You yeah. just, it would cost far too much money. And, you know, as long as you're completely hygienic, yeah. you know, there's certain things you don't I love this concealer. Nobody ever talks about this concealer anymore. It's the Creme de la Mer concealer. Yeah. It's so good. It's got loads of pigment in mm -hmm. it. I love it, but you never really hear it talked about because they're not a makeup brand, are they? They're a skincare no. brand, but yeah. I really love it. I quite, I quite like yeah. Sure Star. Yeah. I that's, and I, th I sort of recommend that if people ask me for like a one-step yeah. fix. It's really An at-home type thing. Yeah. That's a good one. Um, well, that was a good one, actually. Who's that? It's Clé de Peau. Yeah, yeah. Because again, loves Clé de Peau. <laughs> um, Mary's mad for clay. It's her. it's got good staying power lots and of colours. Pigment. Yeah, lots of pigment. Oh, just uh, just to change the tone a little bit. I don't know what these might be broken actually. Wow. Yeah, these are. It's like an Invisalign. Type yes, thing. exactly. That's exactly what it's like. Um, you know, this is just to actually completely change somebody's perfect teeth into very uneven teeth. So what would you do? Would you get a mould done? If, if it was a principal actor and you were going to be using the yeah. teeth every day, you'd get them properly Oh yeah, these molded. are these are custom made. Yeah. So the actor would have their, their teeth um, cast, mm -hmm. have a mould made, and then the technician would make these, you know, to fit. And they're really great. You don't need to use any glue or anything. Yeah, they're they just really, really fine. Um, so they they don't really cause a lot of like change in. Do you know whose teeth anything. these were? This was for Kate in. Um, I just did this video installation with an artist called Julian Roosevelt, mm -hmm. a German artist, and it's called Manifesto. She had to play twelve different characters, mm -hmm. and um, 
it was an art project, so there was very little money. And I remember talking to the producers, and they, I think they said, oh, we've got £3,000 total for all the makeup for the 12 characters mm -hmm. and everything, which is not a lot of money mm -hmm. at all. And I said, well, if I bring most of my own stuff, and as, as much as I can provide, I'd like to... Get some teeth. I'd like to get some teeth. And I think the teeth cost 2000 um, And they were really shocked. Uh, they didn't say anything, but they were really shocked. Afterwards, the producer said to me, I, at the time, I could not believe that you wanted to spend most of your budget on teeth. And now I realise that you absolutely spent the money in the correct way. How funny. Because not only does it change the teeth, but it changes the set of the mouth. Mm -hmm. uh, changes the set of the mouth, the, the way you talk. Um, you know, one of the characters was, um, she was like a rock chick. So it was for Kate Blanchett and she had, so she's got short black hair and plateaus. And I said, I think you should have just a slight gap in your teeth, that very sort of sexy yeah. French look. Yeah. And it, it was just, it was so good. And then, you know, one was a tramp, so we had dirty teeth. One was um, an American um, news newscaster. So she had perfect, perfect is. quite big, yeah. perfect teeth. And that was great because they were quite big and they kind of, you know, completely changed the way Kate, you know, the way the bottom, she, she really loved it. Because with shading and contouring and everything and a wig and different kind of makeup, she really said, I do not look like myself at all. Wow. So, so you spent two grand on teeth for every of the, one of the characters and then took all your own makeup to make the budget yeah. go further. Yeah, in fact, I think I came in under budget. You know, so, um, and also it's one of those things like we were saying less is more. It's yeah. how, how do you, one of the things that I try to do is how to do this with as little makeup to be sort of clever about it. Mm. How can you change? Mm. One, that it's not going to take hours mm -hmm. to achieve the look and two, that it's going to be believable and also that it's not like an encumbrance mm -hmm. really, that you're sort of weighed down with mm. stuff. So this is really easy because you just you pop them in and, yeah. and take them out. And then of course, you know, because I'm not all, you know, I have to make up men as well. I've got lovely little moustaches here. I always love things like this. <laughs> oh, they're really nice. They're, I think these are sort of 30s ones. So that one's never been used because the, the net is around it. Mm -hmm. so, uh, you look quite good with the yeah. tash. I, I, I think I do too. I think maybe you would look good with them. I think that it suits you. <laughs> yeah, what kind of... It, uh, Which one should I have? Well, do you want something what a little bit cheeky? What would you choose for me, Yeah, Maura? a little bit cheeky and something, I think, with a little bit of, you know, personality, but... Oh yeah, ho ho he ho. <laughs> I'm feeling it. <laughs> I'm feeling it. Totally. Okay, when you, it could be, you know, it could st you could start. So you're sticking these on and trimming the net. Well, you can see this one's had the net trimmed yeah. down. So that's that's how we would stick it on. And the net, well, you know, the net used to be invisible with thirty-five millimeter film. Yeah. And now, of course, it's not invisible with yeah. HD. So quite often now, if I put a beard on or whatever, I would put a beard on and then I would lay individual hairs on the top edge. To cover the net. Yeah. Right. Because, you know, the net just, it looks much yeah. heavier than it actually is to the eye, so. Oh. Of course, you've put Kate Blanchett in drag, haven't you, in the past? Yeah, yeah. In fact, you know, it's, it's another thing that's sort of, apart from the period makeup thing, it's another thing that's cropped up throughout my career because I did the film The Crying Game. Mm -hmm. And so, of course, Jay Davidson had to be a convincing girl mm -hmm. at the beginning. And then, you know, well, Orlando, you know, yeah. she starts out as a man becomes a woman. And there was the crying game. Um, Quentin Chris played mm -hmm. Elizabeth I. And then um, Kate played Bob Dylan, mm -hmm. you know, which, and, you know, I think, she, you know, in my opinion, she looked more like Bob Dylan than all the guys in that movie. Yeah, no, I'm no, not there. no, it totally. was quite astounding. And the funny thing was, we were doing Elizabeth the Golden Age, th and we started Bob Dylan three weeks later, so it was really weird. But um, I remember her telling me, and I was so happy because I'm a big Bob Dylan fan, and I felt that she was going from playing the queen to playing the king. <laughs> and we did, but we did the tests um, in her flat, you know, because they filmed in Montreal, so we did a quick test just to get the basis of where it was going in her flat. And I just, I couldn't stop laughing, honestly. It was so hilarious because she was being like, 
you know, it's so convincing, dude, though. Yeah. You do get lost in the performance. You do sort of weirdly yeah, believe I mean, that she yes. is Bob Dylan. Yeah. It was amazing. She, she was really amazing. And but also, he, he did... And it didn't faze me at all because I know Kate's face. So when she said to me, I'm going to pick Bob Dylan, I didn't think, oh, how would I do that? Yeah. I actually thought, I know exactly what I'm going to do. Um, and again, you know, there were no prosthetics. She did have... She had veneers in because he was a smoker, so mm -hmm. he felt that he should, mm. he should have white teeth. And, um, you know, she had special things like um, gel nails to have the guitarists. He had very particular fingernails right. to play in the guitar. And eyebrows, you know, uh, slightly just to make her face more masculine. And also, you know, it was uh, the majority of it was in black and white. Mm -hmm. And um, so actually I took down her, her because her skin is so luminous, mm. I took it down a tone, really. Oh, poor Kate with her over-luminous skin. <laughs> <laughs> that has to be dulled down to look oh, like human skin. Eye palettes. So, yeah, I like to use the Z palettes. Yes. Because, you know, you can just... And how are we grouping these, so... Uh, now, to me, that looks like leftovers from something that I didn't use. Right. <laughs> this probably is something that I did use. Yeah. Um, so it's quite you know straightforward. Yeah. You've got your highlighter and mid tones and then dark. So I love the Z palette because you just yeah. you can create your own art. These look like they're Mac, are they? Yeah, yeah, they're Mac. Um, lo oops, love this one. Bobby. Bobby, fantastic. You know, all rounder, isn't it? Mm -hmm. I always feel that Bobby sh shadows don't have that much pigment in them. Mm. But then I suppose if you're wash if you're doing a kind of washy thing, yeah, they're excellent because they can you can just it's so subtle, you know. Yeah. Um, and you know, I quite it's quite good just to sort of build up anyway. And um, quite often in film, everything just pops too much. Yeah. So I tend to do less rather than more mm -hmm. because it's it's so much um, harder to take it off and yeah. then you have to start again. Yeah. It's much easier just to pump it up. Yeah, so. there's only so many faces and makeup one face can take. Yeah. And then um, you just look like shit. Again, these were the nice Bobby, the Cole palettes, mm -hmm. which are lovely. Um, as I said before, that's my favourite, my Serge Luton palette. That's beautiful. It is, I've used this that's a just lot. really yeah, lovely. It's really great yeah. shading colours. That's a nice, it's an old staple, Cryolan. This is just, it's like your old um, block mascara. Mm -hmm. So it's just to be used with water. Mm -hmm. What are you using this yellowy? Well, you might use that, um, I wouldn't use probably use it straight, but to grey someone's eyebrows. Okay. So that's a very handy thing. Mm -hmm. um, this is a really actually great thing for film because you've got block mascara. I could use this to grey up some eyebrows. I could use this, I could use it as a dirt colour. Mm -hmm. If somebody has to fall down, mm -hmm. you know, I could mix up a nice mud colour or whatever. Um, so that's really handy. It's one of the old but tried and tested film products. It's great. But this is something from ages ago. Well, that's a really nice thing from years ago. That was, they did the, the blue old eyeliner. Packaging. You put the blue eyeliner on, then you just put the black. I had to buy it. I mean, I've never used it on a film, but I loved it so much as, mm -hmm. a, as a look. Are there any um, makeup artists in the other part of the industry mm. that you don't have much to do with, that you look at and admire and are inspired by, that you ever take things? Because I do think it's a two-way street, because fashion makeup artists are inspired by film constantly. Mm. Oh, yeah, that's a good point. Is it a two-way street? Do you look at certain artists in editorial or red carpet or whatever and think, hmm? You mean um, their ranges or their work? Their work? Uh, I think, you know, all the time. I mean, I remember actually, again, going back to Elizabeth the Golden Age, um, I had pictures from Topolino's work. Yeah, I love Topolino. Um, as reference, because we didn't, we sort of pushed it a little bit, like the wigs were bigger than mm. they should have been. So, um, absolutely, and seeing things like Serge Luton's, they're, mm. they're really, you still want to have that very beautiful. I think there's an influence there. When I did Charlotte Grey, I remember Kate saying to me, there was a Prada campaign at the mm -hmm. time, and it was very influenced by the 40s. Mm -hmm. And there was a girl with a short brown bob, very nice, quite natural makeup. And the hair was very, um, it was just like a, a rough bob. It wasn't very groomed. And she said, that's how I want 
mm. and Charlotte Grey, I wanted to, her to have some of that feeling. Mm. So it definitely does mm. um, work both ways, I mm. think. Mm. Blush. Nice. Blush is my favourite thing. Yeah. Just everything comes together, doesn't it, with the cheek? You just it really feel. does, yeah. So what... The cheek, it comes together with the cheek and mascara, I think, yeah. isn't it? They're the yeah. things that really they sort of wake everything up, yeah. don't they? Yeah. So which are your favourites? Well, I have really got into this one, mm -hmm. Charlotte Tilbury's. Mm -hmm. Which colour? Uh, now, the th there's three colours that I've got. Uh, Love Glow mm -hmm. and First Love. Uh, there's a third one, which I don't know what I'm going to have in here. I think that's what it, I had a rose one, a rose base one and a peach. Oh no, I know. So are you doing, you're doing the swirl and pop mm -hmm. or are you doing it all together? Yeah, yeah. swirl and pop, I love it. Mm -hmm. And um, this is First Love. This is, First Love, I, I that's really... That's gorgeous. It is really gorgeous yeah. and it is so natural. Yeah, that's beautiful. Because again, you know, I'm always looking for stuff that just doesn't jump out too yeah. much. So... Yeah, that's um, a lovely colour. I think that's... There might, be, there might be a third one. And the sticks are nice. Yes, I like the sticks. I like, you know, the benefit, I, I really like these when they first came out mm -hmm. um, because you could use it just to warm up a face. It was the pink based one mm -hmm. and that's this one, isn't it? I don't know why. And then Georgia, the peach based one. Mm -hmm. And again, it was a really great, because it was such a gentle nice thing. Nice flat, rosy kind yeah, of. Yeah, it was yeah. a really great thing on set if somebody just went on set and they looked washed out. Mm -hmm. So I always have those. And, and I quite like, there's a bronzing powder that's got like no sparkle in it. Hula, really matte. No orange. <coughs> yeah. That's quite a handy one. It's good for guys as well, even if they've got maybe, you know, like a high forehead. It's yeah. like the hairline, but it's quite good too. Mm -hmm. um, oh, that's the other one, Ecstasy. Mm -hmm. Really nice. Yeah, they've all got mucky names, haven't they? For, first love and then it gets more porny as it goes along, which is... Yes, um, yeah. Charlotte Sexy. Um, this I liked, you know, which was the Lay Beige, uh, mm -hmm. another colour thing just to warm up the skin. I really love, I'm always trying to find out about things that just give us, you know, healthy glow and warm up the skin because, again, I love stuff that's really subtle. Mm -hmm. It's going to help me on set. Oh, yeah, that was an old blue Cargo, yeah. yeah, for HD, but that's actually quite nice. It's got a bit of a sparkle in it, but it's actually quite a lovely... Mm -hmm. Nice colour. Yeah, lovely colour. And these kind of sheery things, are you... Um... Are you using those or was this just to give it a try? That was to give it a try. Again, I quite like to put, um, and I usually, when I'm using Le Maquillage and I, I do the foundation, I tend to put a bit of Le Maquillage, just a peach or a pink, in with the foundation mm -hmm. to set the whole thing mm -hmm. so that the face has something already before I add blush. Uh -huh. So that when I powder the foundation, it doesn't just look like a, a one. Yeah sheet mask yeah. so um, that's why I like those I think they're quite good as well yeah. and you know the Benetton you know I like that for a while but I think there's other ones mm -hmm. that are good and then of course you know my Chanel blushes gorgeous so you're a Chanel oh. fan in this area then You've I think got loads yeah in there. I, I like Chanel products quite a lot and also it's another thing about it's really great you can get Chanel everywhere yeah so you can get it in an airport yeah and you know, in most, unless you're in a really small, I'm going to cut myself again. If you unless find you're, the department store, yes. you're going to be able yeah, to. You're yeah, you're more or less going to be able to get Chanel, so that's, that's really helpful. And that's the blushers. It's, it's interesting to see the, like, the similarities in your kit between, you know, someone like Charlotte or Val or Mary or whatever, but then some things are so different, mm. so, so, so different. That's obviously about, you know, the discipline you work under and the conditions that you work under and stuff. Like things like this are absolutely fascinating. You don't see that very much. Mm. Thank you so much for showing me your kit. This has been one of the most enlightening, <laughs> it was definitely been the most enlightening in the bathrooms with ever because I didn't know 99% of the stuff that you talked about. So thank you so much thank for you. having us. It's been a proper treat. My two best things in the entire world are beauty and film. So to um, combine those two things together has been bliss. Thank you so much for having us. You can take the moustache if you want. <laughs> I totally looked good in that moustache. I could feel it. You looked good in the moustache. We should start something off. Um, thank you so much for having us. Thank you. I, it was a real genuine yeah. honour and a treat. Thank you. And I hope you learnt something too. Thank you very much for watching and we'll see you next time. Bye.